Okay, so in this problem, we are told a spherical balloon has a radius of 7.35 meters and is filled with helium. How large a cargo can it lift, assuming that the skin and structure of the balloon have a mass of 930 kilograms? Neglect the buoyant force on the cargo volume itself. So, as always, you want to draw what's going on. So, we have this spherical balloon here with a radius of 7.35 meters. And we know it's going to be carrying this cargo, uh, right, right here, with some mass m. And so uh, we know this thing is going to be field, uh, filled with helium, and we know it's going to rise as a result of the buoyancy force. And essentially, we're trying to find the max value of m that this thing can lift. So the greatest mass that this cargo can have, and it still be able to rise. Okay, so we know that, and we know that this has helium in it. So imagine that. And uh, we know what's going to be rising it is the buoyancy force, right? Because the density of this helium is much less uh, than the air itself. So we know it's going to rise up. And so we're also given uh, the value for the mass of the balloon structure is 930 kilograms. And so that's basically what we're given here. And so uh, first thing we're going to want to do is find this FB or the buoyancy force of this uh, balloon here. So the formula for this is uh, rho VG, where rho is the density of the surrounding fluid. In this case, the fluid is just air. So uh, the density of that multiplied by the volume of our balloon here times g, which is the acceleration due to gravity, it's just a constant. And so uh, just starting off, we know the density of air is 1.29 kilograms per meter cubed. Uh, and then what we want to find next is the volume of our balloon here. So the formula for volume is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. And we know the radius of the balloon, they tell us, is 7.35. So it's just a matter of plugging it in. So 4 over 3 times pi times 7.35 cubed. So let me plug this in my calculator. So we've got 4 over 3 times pi times 7.35 cubed. So this will give you 1663.224. Obviously, this is in meters cubed since we're dealing with volume. Uh, so plugging this back in up here, you get 1663.224. And then multiplying by the acceleration due to gravity, it's just 9.8 meters per second squared. So I'm just going to use the exact value in my calculator. So multiplying the volume times 9.8 times 1.29, that's going to give us a buoyancy force of 21,026.47. Uh, since this is force, we're dealing with Newtons here. Uh, and yeah, so now we know this is going to be the force that's applied upwards. And uh, what we need to do now is draw the free body diagram of all the other forces acting on our uh, system here. So we know that the helium is going to have some mass. And so I'm going to draw them just anywhere, but keep in mind they're all along the y axis here. So we have the um, force of the helium, right? The force due to gravity of the helium. We have the force, I guess you could write the weight. So I'm actually going to write weight. So the weight due to the helium, right? Because it is the force due to gravity. So WHE. We have the weight due to the balloon, which they tell us, or they tell us the mass. We can easily calculate the weight. And then obviously we have the weight of our container here. So I'm just going to call it W, it's a cargo, right? Yeah, so cargo, I'll call it WC. And so what we're going to want to do now is uh, understand how this works. So if we sum the forces in the Y, right, so the sum of the forces in the Y, if we're trying to figure out the maximum value we can do, it's going to be when the sum of the forces equals zero. So you can kind of imagine it like this. If we have FB, and then we subtract off what the weight due to the helium is, and we subtract off the weight due to the balloon, we'll basically know how much force is left to carry uh, the mass here. And so we know W equals mg. So if we just figure out what the force is going upwards, subtracting the weight here and the, the weight from both of these, uh, we would just divide by g, and then that will give us the maximum mass we could carry. So we want it in equilibrium here. So 0 equals, uh, if the force goes up, you write it positive. If it goes down, you do it negative. So I'm going to minus uh, the weight due to the helium, the weight due to the balloon, and then the weight due to the container. So basically, this tells us uh, the buoyancy force is equal to just moving all these to the other side, the weight due to the helium, the weight due to the balloon, and the weight due to the container. Okay, cool. So now that we know that, right, so we've got that, 
what we're going to want to do is understand what each of these values are. So I know the I can so I'm going to have to figure out what each of these are, right? Because we want to solve basically for WC here. So uh, starting off with the weight due to the balloon, obviously it's just going to be equal to mg. So uh, we have WHE plus mg, where this is the mass of the balloon structure. Uh, and then we also have the mass of the cargo times g. Now, we actually can't break the weight due to the helium, right, in the balloon down like m, because we don't know the mass of it. But the way we can solve for that is by using, sorry about all this, just ignore this, this is from a different problem. But um, we know that uh, this is equal to m h e g, but we don't know the mass of it, right? So we know, though, density equals mass over volume. So we could basically replace this by the volume multiplied by the density uh, of helium. So we can rewrite this as FB equals, um, right? So I'm just replacing MHE with uh, the volume of the hydrogen or helium times its density. So VHE. And then keep in mind density, we use rho. So I'm actually going to just use rho instead of the D. And then times G plus um, MBG plus MG. And so uh, now we have basically this formula. So if we want to solve for the mass of G or the mass of our cargo, we would just minus these to the other side. So Mg equals the buoyancy force minus the volume of the helium times the density of it, rho, times G. Uh, and then you have minus Mbg. And uh, yeah, so uh, notice uh, that it's really just a matter of plugging it in now. I'm going to divide by the G at the end. So we have mg equals, what is our buoyancy force? Well, the maximum it could be is this value right here. We solve for it, or not the maximum, what it is. Sorry about that. Minus the volume of the helium. So the volume of the helium is uh, the same as the volume of the balloon, right? So the volume is right here, 1663.224, right? So that's the volume of our helium times its density. So I actually have the value right here. The density of helium is right here, 0.179 kilograms per meter cubed. So 0.179 times G, which is 9.8. And then you're minusing the mass of the balloon structure, which is 930 times 9.8. And so notice we have everything written here. Um, so I'm going to figure what this is. So 21026.47 minus 1663.224 times 0.179 times 9.8 minus 930 uh, times 9.8. Yeah, so when you do this, you'll get mg equals 8994.84. Dividing by g, which is obviously just the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. You're going to get m, or your mass, is equal to 917.84. So this is the amount in kilograms that this thing can carry with the buoyancy force from the balloon. So this would be the maximum, right? Right, Because they want us to find um, how large a cargo it can lift. Well, we know that, let me zoom in here. We know that the buoyancy force is this. And then if we're assuming the buoyancy force is that, this is what M could be, right? The maximum value M could be. Or else, obviously, if this was greater than that, the value would be too big and then it, would, it wouldn't even go upwards because uh, the forces, right? These forces added up, or sorry about that. These forces added up. If this mass was greater than the value we just found, 920, it would be greater than FB, which means it wouldn't even rise. So that's why we set it equal to FB because we can find the value at which it's equal, right? So that's basically the minimum, or sorry, the maximum value of M at which it will still rise. So hopefully that makes sense. Your answer is going to be 920 kilograms. Uh, just reviewing how we did it. So I knew what's going to be pushing this thing up is the buoyancy force. And then I also wanted to label all my other forces that are weighing it down. So the mass of the cargo, the mass of or the weight due to the helium, the weight due to the cargo, and the weight due to the surrounding stuff of the balloon. And so 
if I set them, right, if I sum the forces there, I know the buoyancy force is going to be equal to these, right, all these forces here. And then uh, I knew M was a part of this, right, the mass of the cargo was a part of the weight due to the cargo. And then I just basically uh, manipulate it and then we were able to solve for M. So kind of a tricky problem, but as long as you realize that the buoyancy force has to be equal to these forces here, the weight due to the helium, the weight due to the balloon, and the weight due to the cargo, right? If you want to maximize the M, they're equal to each other. And then it's just a matter of plugging it in and solve. Obviously, to solve for the weight due to the helium was a little bit tricky because you had to do the density equals uh, mass over volume. Uh, but yeah, so keep in mind rho is the density here. That's how we did that. So yeah, so your answer here is 920 kilograms. And hopefully you found this uh, video useful.